Hey everyone, welcome back to Unicorn Desk Designs. Today we are going to do a Halloween video and don't you do not click off. I know a lot of you are not into Halloween, but I'm going to show you some classy upscale Halloween decor dealer that is not spooky and it's not tacky. So I hope you stay tuned. Let's get started. We're going to start off with these two candlesticks. You only see one, there is two. And I painted and waxed these well over a year ago, and I wanted to see how applying paint over that would work. So let's see. So I am taking Black Velvet by DIY Paints, and this is a beautiful, it's like a very deep charcoal color. And I wanted to replicate a pet paint look that Upcycle by Brie did where she took a bird and tried to make it look like cast iron. So that's what we're doing here. I'm going to paint both candlesticks in the black velvet, let it completely dry, and then I'm going to take DIY's black wax. And this is going to deepen the color of this. And it's going to help um, allow our dark and decrepit dust to stick to our surface. So I am just going to take a paper towel, wipe the excess off. Then I'm going to dab my finger in the dark and decrepit dust. And I am going to put those in random spots around the candlestick. So it almost looks like little bits of rust on the cast iron. I am going to do this to the second one as well. Now, after you're done applying this, you're going to want to take a paintbrush of any sort and you're going to get the remnants off, like the extra dust on there. So you can see how I'm hitting on all those kind of hard edges. I get that paintbrush and I dust the excess off, but majority of it is going to stick to our wax. I'm going to go ahead and set that aside and grab this nest. Y'all, I had this on my porch all summer long in the heat and these little eggs started cracking. It was so funny, but they were attached to this nest like cement. I, I could not pry these up without breaking the nest. So I decided to take crinoline, paint all of the eggs the same color. Then while it was just a little bit damp, I took the dark and decrepit liquid batina and I brushed those on top of the eggs and then wiped them back. I wanted them to look, you know, eerie, kind of dirty and not creepy, but you guys are picking up what I'm putting down, right? So now we're going to take this crow. You guys, I bought so many of these on Amazon. I better use them all. I'm gonna hot glue the feet and they also have wires attached to the feet. I'm gonna put the wires down in the nest and then glue the feet to the nest. I thought it needed just a little something extra. So I'm gonna grab this reindeer moss from Dollar Tree and I'm just gonna put those in random spots, including like the side and kind of underside of the nest. And then I'm going to take my taller of the two candle holders. I'm going to put some hot glue on the top right there, attach our nest, and that's it. I love how this cast iron effect turned out. So thank you, Brie, for the inspiration. I love that these are a little bit more upscale, vintage looking, and I definitely would put this in my own home decor. 110%. Let me know what you think about this faux cast iron look and our little crow. This next one, you guys, I am taking a Dollar Tree skeleton or yeah, skull from Dollar Tree. I decided to get the clear so that it was easier to paint. I'm going to do my terracotta paint color mixed with Summer Crush and Faded Burlap. And then I am just going to stipple the paint on. For the most part, one coat gave me pretty full coverage and I just had to go over the spots that I had missed. Once that is completely dry, you're going to take your white DIY wax and you're going to brush that over your skull. This is not only going to seal the skull and the paint for us, this is also going to bring out all of the beautiful details in the skull. So I made sure to really hit on all of like 
the sockets, the ridge of the nose, and then the like cheekbones right there. That way it really popped out. And y'all, you guys remember these from last week? I could not waste that terracotta looking paint color. So we're gonna finish the, <laughs> these off as well. But back to the skull reveal. I love how this turned out. I'm not usually like a skull kind of gal, but I have been so inspired by Pinterest lately. And this just looks so modern and sleek, like something you would see at like West Elm or Anthropology. So I'm definitely digging this for sure. And to keep with the, the skull theme, I just had to try the cast iron look on the skull. So uh, again, I'm painting this. At first I did old school because I didn't realize she used black velvet in her video. So I do end up painting over it with the black velvet. And again, just taking the black wax and then wiping the remnants off. However, when I went to go wipe it off of the skull, it kind of wiped down to the original color. So just be careful. I didn't mind the look at all. And again, just taking that dark and decrepit dust, this comes in brown and white, and you're gonna hit all of the hard edges of your skull. So you can see how I'm getting in there and getting all of those parts that are kind of like popping out at you. And let me tell you what, this darn skull goes with everything. It is such a great little added accessory to a lot of the items that I made in today's video. So I was surprised with how much I like it. So comment with the skull if you're digging the skulls. Now this last one, I feel so bad because I saw this on a smaller channel and I was watching it on TV and I wish I could give her credit. If anybody knows, comment down below. She took the little cinnamon like broom things from Dollar Tree and she took some skewers. I'll, I'll, I'll say them, you know, how I do it. Okay. So I took the skewers, I cut them down just a little bit with my wire cutters and I'm going to take the dark and decrepit liquid patina and a baby wipe. I did two coats of these on the skewer sticks. I could have just actually painted the dark and decrepit on and then wiped it off, but eh, let's work harder. All right, now I'm going to push that skewer down into the little broom. And then some of the bristles might like kind of pop out totally fine. Stick some hot glue in there and then stick that skewer back in there or dowel. It's a dowel, you guys. Okay, and then I am also going to do the same thing she did, which was grab some twine and I'm going to hot glue it to the top. And then I'm going to wrap it. At first I start wrapping upwards, but I ended up wrapping going down. And then I just put a little bit of dark and decrepit on the twine to make it look a little dingy and dirty. And that was it, you guys. These were so easy. You get the smell of cinnamon and they will seriously look cute on a vignette on an island, in your tiered tray, up in your bookshelves. I mean, you can't go wrong with these. I wonder if they would sell in my booth. What do you guys think? I love these. If anybody knows the original uh, creator, let me know. Hey, you guys, stopping in. So what do you think? Is the Halloween decor so far tacky? Is it classy? What are your thoughts? I was inspired. I was actually scrolling through Pinterest and I kept seeing all of the, I think last year they started trending the like terracotta pumpkins and then the cement pumpkins. And then I saw the terracotta skulls and that is what hooked me. I was like, yes. I am gonna DIY for Halloween. So I don't know if it's gonna be a million videos, you know, but I at least wanted to do one. So I hope you're enjoying it. Remember, all my links are down in the description box for you if you want to purchase any of the paint products. And you all know the drill. If you're digging me, if you're digging the DIYs, if you're digging this video, then make sure you like, subscribe, hit the bell for all so you're notified every single time I upload, which is usually three times a week. And you all have an amazing day and let's get back into the video. Okay, my friends, I'm so excited to show you this. I got 
probably over 20 more designs of Roy Cycle Deco Podge Paper, the Halloween, the fall, the Christmas, and some other ones as well. So go check out my website down in the description box because the seasonal ones usually sell out. So I am essentially going to make one of those um, tile blocks again, and I am going to take a little black dress, which is like the truest black in the DIY line. And I'm gonna paint the back and all my sides. Then on the front, I'm going to use crinoline. I didn't wanna use a pure white because I thought it might be too bright behind my decoupage paper. So I decided to go with crinoline. I'm gonna do again, like you've seen me do in a previous video, I'm gonna grab a stamp and I am going to add a crackle effect to the paint. Now, whatever you stamp is gonna show through that decoupage paper. Well, depending upon what decoupage paper you're using. I decided to add a little butterfly as well. And then we are gonna go ahead, let that dry for a little bit so it doesn't smear. I'm gonna grab my decoupage paper. This is one of the Roy Cycled Halloween decoupage papers. And I am going to grab my liquid patina, which is a decoupage medium, and I'm gonna apply that in sections. So I apply it to the wood, then I kind of mist my decoupage paper, and then whatever I have left on my brush, I use it to push my decoupage paper down. And then I'm gonna repeat that process all the way down. I love liquid patina. It's nice, it's thin, it's not like Mod Podge, which is a little bit thicker and harder to work with in my opinion. And after it dries, I'm gonna go in downward motions and sand the excess paper off. Once that is finished, I wanna seal those edges of my paper, so I'm gonna take liquid patina once again and I go all around and seal it. I'm gonna take these, what are these? resin molds, and I'm going to take Golden Ticket. Golden Ticket is the same thing as Pennies from Heaven, except it is gold. I think I only have a few available on my website. I'm gonna give these two coats each, you guys. After that, I'm gonna grab the black wax, and I'm gonna push that in all those details. Grab a paper towel and wipe the excess off. I'm gonna do the same thing for the Florida lease, and I'm gonna grab my tight bond um, glue, and I'm going to put the crown on top of the owl. And then I do kind of cover up the butterfly. Do you see how you could see the butterfly and the crackle through that decoupage paper? Ooh, yes please. I'm gonna take the Florida lease, and I kind of cover up the, um, what do you call it? The butterfly, but it, it's not a problem. So we're gonna lay that Florida lease right there, and it just gives it more, I don't know, detail, more for the eye to look at. I love how this turned out. It is so pretty. The decoupage paper is so detailed and beautiful. And do you guys see how you could see the stamp in the background? And then that butterfly as well. And then the molds are just a little added sprinkle to our little block tile, which I love. Now, this is what the entire piece looks like. I should have showed this one first, but is this not gorgeous? You guys, there's so much you could get out of one piece of decoupage paper, it's crazy. Like, I already know the top right piece I wanna put on top of a book. It's like books in a cloche. Oh my gosh, it's gonna look fabulous. All right, check it out. There's, I think, another, a second, no, there's two more Halloween ones. Okay, so I'm gonna take my rolling pin and I did this kind of sketchy, you guys. I literally wrapped it up, drew a little line, and then I held it up to draw the length of the rolling pin. So by no means is this super well done because it was my first time doing a rolling pin with the paper, let's be honest. So I'm gonna start by getting my liquid patina and putting it on there. However, this rolling pin was raw and it was just sucking up all of that liquid patina. So I really had to put a good amount on there. However, it worked and it clung. So again, just going in sections, applying that liquid patina, spritzing the paper. Now spritzing the paper with water is going to give you less wrinkles. It's going to allow you to stretch your decoupage, like kind of like pull at it a little bit so that you have, again, 
less wrinkles and you can kind of move it as you need to. Now it's so thin, but you guys, I promise it's so durable is crazy. So I keep going around and I will tell you it's a lot easier when you lay it down on something instead of trying to hold it in your hand, which I was doing previously. And then look at the detail. I thought I had to go with the crows and the, the little skeleton because it kind of went with everything else I was making today. And then we're going to put that liquid patina around the rest of it. Now, by no means are my like two ends neat whatsoever. That I did a jagged cut, you guys. I should have done it clean, but you know, I wasn't thinking, but it turned out, look, you can't even notice it right there. So after that uh, dries up, I'm gonna take that liquid patina and go over the entire rolling pin one more time. I'm gonna grab my finger sander, sand the excess off the ends, and then because I thought for whatever reason it didn't, it wasn't flowing, I ended up getting dark and decrepit and like putting it on the end right here of the rolling pin. And this is how cute it turned out, you guys. I have this Ray Dunn Halloween utensil holder, and I was thinking this is going to look so cute with it and have some like little, you know, dark greenery, like spewing out, spewing out. <laughs> you guys, I need to go to sleep. But this is pretty darn cute. The paper is so detailed. I love it. It's a little eerie. It reminds me of Ghost Whisper. Do you guys remember the show Ghost Whisper? I, I have watched that so many times. Okay, my last one was just a kind of experiment, I guess. I did the terracotta color that I love, and then I'm gonna add some salt wash in it. I wanted to see if I could take the Dollar Tree Styrofoam Pumpkin and make it look more high end, kind of like um, I did with the skull. So I'm gonna take my salt wash, which is a paint additive. It's going to create a lot of texture and whatever texture you achieve, it's gonna stay. It's not gonna flatten out on you. And it is, it's literally like rock. You cannot get this stuff off. So I'm just taking a chippy brush and then instead of stippling it on like I usually do, I am going to paint it. Like, so I'm gonna, I want the brush strokes in there. I didn't want it to look like distressed farmhouse, French country. I wanted it to have that more modern feeling to it. So I chose to kind of just slap it back and forth. I'm really good at explaining things to you guys, I know. So once that dried, I noticed that the seams of the pumpkin were still sticking out. So I got whatever I had left of that salt wash mixture and I added as thick as I could to the side. And then again, with like the brush strokes to blend it into the rest. After it was completely dry, I got a stick from outside and I glued it to the center. I really wanted to go with kind of minimalistic. So I didn't want to do a leaf and all of that stuff. I grabbed that DIY white wax once again, and I'm going to hit, I'm going to call them panels of the pumpkin to just highlight all of the details in there almost create like a shadow effect to it and then again that seals our pumpkin and i think this looks pretty darn good for being a dollar tree pumpkin i think we brought that from like a dollar 25 to i don't know what price but I think it looks really good and I'd be proud to show it off in my home. I hope you guys enjoyed this. I know Halloween DIYs are not for everyone, but I really had fun creating them and using the new deco posh paper. So if you want to see more, let me know down in the comments. <laughs> yeah, I thought I was going to say something and then it stopped. Okay. My, this smells really good. Yeah, I swim my clothes. Uh-huh. Don't act like you don't. It's okay. That was a mouthful. <laughs>